Come on in, everybody. It's question and answer day. I have 15 questions. I have only looked at one of them. So, y'all, this is going to be fun. Let me get the chat up. Get ready. There's Sandy from Virginia. Put, tell us where you're from. I'm in North Carolina. I, f I follow people all over the world. I can follow the weather coming my direction. So get on in here. I got a, got some coffee. I got my questions. And we are good to go. Let's start with some announcements. Y'all, it's less than a week. You got today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Seven days left to be able to get an order placed and get it delivered. Now, every, everything's backing up with delivery stuff. So y'all have to, um, the sooner the better to get, to get your orders placed. If there's something you've been wanting, like that beautiful feather duster back there or uh, the complete packet. Maybe you got some gifts that you can't figure out what to buy them. Get them a calendar. Get them a calendar. This is a great gift. Um, the Chaos to Clean book we're going to be starting in in January. And the Chaos Cure book that's on the shelf right there. That's a great book for people just getting their first apartment. Or their dorm room. It's it's written for millennials. It's written for, I don't know what they are. <laughs> Young people just starting out. You know, born in the in the two thousand area, and just getting off to college. Okay, folks, let's get started. Because the best deal in the fly shop is our. Our complete pack. It's a, a. It's usually like $188. So get it now while you can. Okay. We're just going to jump in and we're going to go as fast as we can. And I didn't have lights on. There. Let there be light. Where should Christmas themed coffee mugs be kept during the rest of the year? Should they be with the regular cups or stored away with my decorations? I'd say neither. I have some a china closet that I have my Christmas stuff in. It's glass. It's breakable. I don't want to store it with Christmas decorations. It might get bounced around. So, and you might forget where you've put it. So I keep glassware with glassware. So I have... Um, some little mugs. I've got some um, plates and plaid. They're Martha Stewart something. I saw them and I really liked them because I like plaid. I don't have them plaid right now, but it. I keep my mugs and my teapot all with, I have a shelf in, in my china closet. Well, it's just a cabinet with glass doors on it. And I store mine. Well, you can put them wherever you want to. They're your mugs. And I I just keep mine where I like them. Because sometimes I want to be festive in July. I'm so upset that rubbing alcohol is double in price. And the bottle is so tiny. What can I use to sanitize frequently touched places in my home? There is a lot of sickness going around. Soap and water. Soap and water. It does amazing stuff. Just amazing stuff. And if you want to sanitize things, a drop of bleach. Maybe you put together uh, some Dawn dishwashing liquid and a, a couple of drops of bleach in a spray bottle. And that'll work fine. But soap and water on a purple rag and wipe down things, you're good to go. And Libby says peroxide might work too, but you got to be careful with peroxide. 
And they're going to get you any way they can. And if you got a bottle of vodka, that'll sterilize things if you want to get rid of some alcohol in your house. I probably probably vodka is cheaper than uh rubbing alcohol. Imagine that. That's just stupid. Just mm, mm, don't get me started. What are some good generic gifts to give to guys who show up unexpectedly? On Christmas, sometimes a couple of guys will be with the college age kids. Calendars always work. Calendars always work. Purple rags and gray rags work really well too, because guys like to like to wash their cars, and these are great tools for washing the cars. This is inexpensive, but it's a great tool. For, for guys washing the top of a car, anything they can do is, is, is with cleaning their cars is a good thing. Trying to think of the other things that we don't sell that would be good for guys. I'm just pondering. I don't know. If y'all come up with any ideas, stick them in the chat. Yeah, roll up some with a candy cane and tie a pretty ribbon on it. That's great, Rosalind. That's great. There's Sister Patty. Did you make it? She's on a road trip. trip. Okay. That's three. What is the last day to order from the fly shop? It is next Wednesday. Now, usually we do something nice for people who got some last minute orders in after midnight. So get like next Wednesday, the 20th is the last day. I'm new to decluttering and I want to get my husband on board too. Should I let him know what the zone is for the week so he might pitch in some pitch in some of the things too does it help for men to know what we are only working on what we are only working on in one area instead of the whole house hey if he wants to declutter someplace that is um not the zone. Don't complain. Let him do his thing. But don't say, honey, we're in zone four this week and um, we're cleaning out our bed, our drawers in our bedroom. Um, that's the only place we're going to fall. If he wants to declutter, say, honey, I'm decluttering in our bedroom this week. You can declutter wherever you want to. You don't even have to declutter. But if you want to contribute some stuff to the decluttering process, Thank you. Thank him. Uh, Trisha's got a great idea. Write the zones on the calendar. Decluttering in the bedroom this week. Decluttering in, in our bathroom this week. But let him declutter his areas. Yeah, his areas. Like a, in the shop if he wants to get rid of some stuff. I told just I told Robert that we have a dumpster. We're, we've been decluttering at the office. And I said, we've got a dumpster at the office if you want to contribute to it. And he said, good to know. I'm not telling him. I'm not telling him to contribute to it. I'm just saying, if you want to get rid of some stuff, it's there for you. I have been shopping and saved my wrapping until now. Should I designate the table as a wrapping station and hope nobody comes by and sees their stuff or take it to the bedroom where I could do where I don't have a good wrapping station, but I can shut the door. Here's the deal. You hadn't followed our holiday plan and you've waited to the last minute. And it's going to be difficult for you. So what I would do is I would set it up on your kitchen counter and just kitchen counter or dining room table or I like to wrap things 
in the living room. I have a table that lifts up, and so I can I can wrap things there. I, or in here, I have a, a surface that's good. Wrap one present at a time. Leave the presents where you've got them stashed and go get one present at a time and wrap it. And maybe put it in a box before you take it into the kitchen or dining room where you're going to wrap. One present at a time. You need to move anyway. Yeah, one of the first missions we had back in October was to set up a wrapping station. So you haven't done that. And welcome to the way you've been doing things your whole life. You know, it hadn't worked. You get it done, but you're stressed out just breaks my heart. We worked so hard. Well, here I am playing the martyr. But we start in October trying to get everything done and you put off the wrapping. Yeah, I'm I'm Wednesday's anti procrastination day. You've had six Wednesdays and now three Wednesdays. That's nine Wednesdays you've ignored everything we've done. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you want to find some peace in your life? Start doing something instead of putting it off. I don't know whose question that was, but I'm going to tell it like it is. We spend from October, the middle of October till the middle of December trying to get you ready. Love you, Martha. Mm. <clears throat> Are we exempt from zone work and decluttering during Christmas vacation? No. No. You got to stay on top of everything because Christmas vacation, you got pop in guests and everything. You got to keep things looking good. And you got to pick up after yourself. So living room, I, I don't have the zones in front of me, but it's usually the living room is zone five. Let me look at the calendar. I can tell you right quick. December. Christmas is on a Monday. That is zone five. So let's, you know, keep your living room clean. When you're unwrapping presents, have a gross uh, a garbage bag handy. And put the trash away. But be careful. One time um, we were unwrapping presents at Granny, and she always gave us a check for for money. That's what she liked to give us for Christmas. And <clears throat> one of the checks got burned up. Oh my goodness, fly lady! My car looks like a looks like Christmas exploded in it. It is a mess of glitter and paper. How do I get the glitter out of the carpet? Well, <laughs> let's just say you might have to take it to the car wash and vacuum the car. But you also might have to take one of those lint rollers. And it's you, you're going to have to have sticky. I mean, glitter is a mess. It's it's just a mess. I got some pine cones that had glitter on them. I had glitter on me for days. And I took back, Patty says duct tape. So, folks, I wouldn't worry about the carpet in the car until after Christmas and then you can mess with it because probably you're going to be carrying some things and there's going to be more glitter so just wait you get a good vacuum cleaner at at the car wash and it'll suck stuff up and anybody who sticks glitter in Christmas cards needs to be whipped or confetti either one 
Can your mashed potato recipe be frozen? If yes, how do I thaw them and how long does it take? I just, this year I put it in a Ziploc bag and, and sort of formed it the way like my round dish. You can put the dish in the freezer, but I don't like to have cold mashed potatoes in my pretty ceramic dishes. So what I do is I take the mashed potatoes and form it in a Ziploc bag to fit the dish I know I'm going to heat them up in. And when it freezes, I just take it out and leave it in the freezer. Now, to cook them, you take the mashed potatoes out of the freezer and put them in the refrigerator to thaw up for 24, maybe 36 hours. And then you put it in your dish and you set it at room temperature for just a few hours. And then you can put it in your oven. And how long does it take? I like, I, I keep my oven on low when I'm doing my potatoes and I sprinkle some cheese on top and usually it takes about an hour. Uh, well, the oven is at 250 to 300 degrees and it's slow and steady. Or you can put them in a, in a crock pot. Something big just flew over. Hmm. Yes, and mash, the mashed potatoes can be frozen, but they need a lot of butter. They need a lot of cream. Uh, you can even put some sour cream in them or some cream cheese. And they, they, they do well. How do you make gravy? <laughs> I think I have a, a video on how to make gravy. How to make gravy when after fried chicken. But Justin and I love sausage gravy. We call it sawmill gravy. And he will cook a, a pound of sausage like you would brown hamburger meat and then take it out of the skillet and he'll add some more oil to it. Well, I told him this morning, I said, honey, son, if you put um, some bacon in the pan with the sausage, you'll get enough oil to do the gravy. And he puts flour in and adds milk and stirs it around. And you can do that. I like to take a half a cup of flour, plain flour, and a half a cup of cold water, stir it together to, till it's a slurry, then add some, or milk. You can use cold milk too if you're making sawmill gravy. And <clears throat> But if you're making like chicken gravy for fried chicken, you would use water or and get get everything hot in the pan and pour the slurry in there and if you need more liquid in it to smooth it out just keep stirring it around with a whisk and you'll be fine but i think i have a i have a video on that okie dokie let's see where we got here how do i keep all the food hot at one time for big events like Christmas. Well, you, you, you can utilize crock pots. Uh, I bought many years ago, and I just gave it to Rebecca. She has big family gatherings that have a crock pot that has three things in it. You can also get a warming griddle that you can set things on that can't be plastic plastic but i just keep everything in the oven and i put lids on things when i set it out on my account on i use my kitchen counter as a buffet and the top of my stove i have a smooth stove and it just keeps everything warm put the lids on things or have things wrapped up with aluminum foil but i i have a big oven and i have a little oven and both of those ovens have things in them getting warm. While, because I usually pre-cook everything and I don't have a whole lot to cook the morning of, of Christmas or Thanksgiving. But you'll be adding things to your holiday feast 
And, and you can find things. Just just look for them. You can also, I know one time um, I did our, my baked beans for my sister's wedding. And I had baked beans for 100 people. And we had those chafing dishes that had the little candles underneath them. And that's fun too. Um, fondue sets can heat things up. Do you have a music playlist to play during the holidays when the guests start arriving for and for dinner? I don't like music when we're trying to eat. I, I really don't enjoy that. But Robert always puts on something classical. And it's, I don't ever plan the music. I don't do, I don't really do holiday music, but I like classical music. And Robert will put something on. A lot of times people who can't hear well have problems when, um, have problems with the music going in the background while they're trying to talk at the dinner table. So keep that in mind. Some people just like to put on the fireplace channel on the TV and it's, it's running some music. So I don't have a playlist. What do you get someone who has everything and they don't want anything, but you want to have a gift to open under the tree? Well, that's where the cafe mocha comes in or a calendar. This is a great tool for people that are older because this, my, because look how big the squares are. This is great for people that have everything because they always need a calendar. My stool is squeaking. I think having a couple of calendars hanging around for those people is a good idea. Okay. Hi, fly lady. I feel so stressed out at all that needs to be done every day, and I'm not finding time to relax, let alone pamper myself this month. I feel like my mind is holding so much information, memories, things to do, to find and find it difficult to just laugh and relax. How do you cope with stress? It's called my bathtub. <laughs> I love my bathtub. I just get in there and just soak. I don't have any troubles, y'all. A few years ago, I did. I had a, a nephew that was dying, and he had nobody, and it was it was tough. It was it was tough, but a bathtub does it. Listening to music, reading your Bible, going to the Lord in prayer—all of these things are wonderful ways to. You give it to God. Now, if you're trying to hold all this stuff in your head, get you a notepad, a notebook, a three-ring binder, uh, a spiral uh, a spiral notebook, and just do a brain dump, a brain dump of everything you've got to do. And then you can divide it up into sections of six to order them one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then start rolling the dice. You can do this. You come first. And then sit down and polish your fingernails. Get ready. I mean, yesterday I got out liquid, some liquid gold, or I don't know, treasure gold is what it's called. And I was trying to rub it on some pine cones. And I just said, I'll just get spray paint. <laughs> I'm not good. It, I got, it's underneath my fingernails. It's driving me nuts. I don't know if you can, but I had gold all over me. It wasn't glitter, but it was like a wax. Can I do, can you do an anti-procrastination week after Christmas too? I'm unable to do all this month because certain things but would love after Christmas here and there 
Anti-procrastination day is really a help. For some reason, it is motivating, and I think it causes us to give permission because this stuff happens to everyone. It causes us to... I think it's cause because you give us permission because the stuff happens to everyone. Here's the deal. Cleanup missions start. Our our fifth our three 15 missions of the holiday super cruising missions end tomorrow. But the there's the Roomba knocking. That makes me so happy. Um, but the day after Christmas on the 26th, we start cleanup. Yeah, we start cleanup. And also teach your kids how to write thank you notes to people who who you know gifts kind of go under the tree well in order for the gifts from the kid the kids got they have to write a thank you note before they can put it away in their room and play with it <laughs> i know it's weird but it wor- it, it has worked for many years for some friends of mine and teaching them to write thank you notes is a powerful way to instill in your children that it's important to be appreciative. So after Christmas, we're going to start our holiday missions. They go, there's 10 missions and they go till Epiphany, the January the 6th, I think it is. Anyway, that's our questions. Look at us. What have we done? We got through 15 questions pretty fast. That's great. Well, Kelly, that is a beautiful idea. It's like starting a new year out on the right right foot, you know, giving your your daughter a complete pack. You might want to throw in a feather duster while we have them. So thank you for complimenting my scarf. I wanted to be a little festive today. So thank you for complimenting my scarf. Anyway, y'all, we got stuff to do. I'll be running this this weekend. I may run it um, a few times. I may run two. This weekend, the, the Reawaken Tour is in California starting tomorrow, and it'll be starting later in the in the day for me. And I love to watch them. I haven't missed a single one. I don't get to go to them, but it's still fun to watch all my favorite people. Amanda Grace. and There's some, some great people that I like to listen to. So, y'all, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, please be with all my fly babies that are pulling together all their last-minute Christmas festivities help them to make their grocery lists and get the things in the house that they need to cook father please help them to be patient and kind to the people in their family and not be christmas banshees there's nothing worse so lord help us to check our tongues and to be good kind and sweet lord because it is so important for us to set an example for our families. They look up to us, Lord, and we are to train up our children in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Thank you, Lord. Please be with us as we go through some tough times. Thank you for helping us to build pantries to be ready for tough times. 
Thank you for helping us to have simple Christmas and enjoy the family comes together. And for all those who don't have family, Lord, be with them. Help them to reach out and help others during this year. Maybe volunteer somewhere at a food bank or just give them give them purpose to their lives, Lord. Thank you for the word. Thank you for sending your son to die for us so that we could spend eternity with you in heaven. I can't wait, Lord, to, to worship you in person. God, we love you with all our hearts. Keep us strong. Protect us from evil. And in the end, Lord, bring us to you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, y'all, I spent yesterday listening to Victor Marks. And he has such a pure message. And there is hope. There is hope for everyone to find their calling. He found his. He found his. Uh, <clears throat> the Reawaken Tour is, is on Rumble and it's on uh, Freedom Patriot Network on YouTube. It's um, Clay Clark out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. <clears throat> saw a saw a Clem, Kim Clement prophecy from 2014. And it said a man named Clark and another man and Clay wasn't an atheist, but he wasn't, in his own words, he wasn't doing, he, he wouldn't allow anybody to talk religion or politics or, he just, he didn't. And Clay started the Reawaken Tour because he went to his wife and he says, I think, I think God has a plan. And I've been hearing that we're supposed to do this. And she said, yeah. <clears throat> they lose $100,000 every time they do one. And they do one every couple of months. For, for a year and a half during the lockdowns, they did one every month. So y'all... Thanks to Jeanette. Y'all be good, kind, and sweet. And get your pantry stocked. So, that, I mean, I have cocktail sausage, cocktail weenies in, in, in my refrigerator. I have a brie. I have stuff to make quiche i have um i have the things i need to set up a, a nice little charcuterie board so y'all be good kind and sweet be good to yourself by making a list of everything you got left to do. And it doesn't matter if it's two pages. You got to start somewhere and you, you got to quit trying to remember, remember, remember. Just sit down with a cup of coffee and your notepad and just start writing things down. I call it a brain dump. Y'all, I keep, keep pulling my hair down because the marble right there. Makes me think I've got a stray hair. It's driving me nuts. So y'all be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by writing down the full list. And this 
Take a dice and start working through it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And set your timer and utilize it. Put on some Christmas music and have some fun. You can do it. You can do it. Be kind to others by doing what somebody said. I would like to have a couple of gifts around for people that come to our home with some of our family members. I like to have girls and boys gifts. You know, girls are easy. Boys, on the other hand, are difficult. <laughs> and let that goodness and sweetness that is in your heart show the world who you are, a child of the Most High, the only living God in the universe. One day we're going to get to be with Him. I love you all. I'll see you later.